Uh, you know, my students know me as someone who, you know, I build really close relationships with them so that I can actually communicate with them about what they need to do. So I'm really a stickler on cell phones in class. Um, and it was actually an instance when Wayne, um, who's Asada's father, was on his phone in class. Um, and I, you, students are usually, you know, um, young people today tend to be on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> I am as well, right? Um, but I think I was like, hey, guys, let's get off your phones uh, because we need to get ready for an assignment coming up. And he was like, you know, I'm actually texting my wife to make sure that everything's good with my daughter. And I think at that moment, you know, it was like, hey, if you ever need support, because he had been leaving my office hours early to go pick her up or sort of switch things over. And it was really about supporting him. And I try to do that with all my students. And I was considering like, like just staying home, uh, watching the baby while my wife ran out and grabbed the birth certificate. But I was like, no, I need to make this class. Um, and then I remember two weeks prior, Dr. Alexander said, hey, if need be, bring your baby. So I put my book bag on my back and I strapped my baby to my chest and we walked to class. First initially came to the um, uh, class uh, with the baby, I was going to turn around because I saw those dudes in there and I'm like, oh, man, all eyes are going to be on me. I'm like, you know, you have every reason to go back home. You know, you have every reason to stay home. You have every reason to like not come to class today. I'm getting ready for the lesson. And this has sort of been the photo that's sort of all over the internet. I put up the problem on the board for students to get started. And there's a baby and Wayne uh, at the door. And he's like, hey, you said if I ever needed anything, let you know, here she is. Um, so he was getting settled, and then a few minutes later, um, I said, I saw him sort of getting her back down. We were starting the lesson. I said, hey, if you need me to hold her so you can get good notes, let me know. And so we spent a few minutes at the beginning of the lecture. We switched her from his chest to mine, um, and I was just bouncing most of the class. And I started the lecture going over that problem, and uh, the rest of the class went really well. She was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said you were a natural. <laughs> So what's your, I mean, are you around yeah. babies? Do you have wife babies? What, what, what's going no, on? No, so I'm not a father myself. I do have two wonderful nephews, Jaden and Tristan, and they have taught me a lot about just caring and loving young people. I think young people are the future, um, and so I have had a lot of practice with my friends as babies, but I'm not a father myself. Okay, but you knew what you were doing. Yeah, I, I think it was sort of natural. I think, you know, there's two things or three things I feel like you need to do with the baby. You need to keep them sort of pacified by moving. And she had a pacifier and we were sort of playing. I gave her my finger when I was moving so she had something to hold on to. And she was just sort of chilling most of the time. She didn't make a single sound at all. She was playing with her uh, binky, her pacifier. Um, he rocked her a little bit. She was uh, giving everybody like the mean mug, like you better pay attention. Uh, and uh, I, we had her bottle on standby. Um, at his desk, but she didn't need it, and uh, she, even, uh, she eventually ended up falling asleep. Um, I like to tell people that teachers do this every day in their own way. So I think it's nice to see me with the baby, but teachers support their students in, in their own way. And that's how you did that? Yeah. yeah. And since then, it went viral. How did you yeah. find out about it? <laughs> what, what happened when you realized Oh man, I'm being seen in Europe? What? <laughs> so my students told me, I think right after, that they'd taken a photo and I was like, I want to send it to my mom. You know, I love my mom and I talk to her every day and I just wanted to show her like, I taught class with math with a baby today. And students start coming by my office hours and they're like, did you see Twitter? And as the afternoon goes on, more students are coming by. I look and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And next thing I know, um, we're here. And did you think it could ever be like this? No. Like people would actually be like caring, you know? Yeah, you know, I think what people are resonating with um, is the community and the caring. I think right now in society, we're looking for community. And I think these are times when we need to think about community. And I think that example sort of shows me that it's resonating with folks. Um, because community matters. But it was really special to have this here at Morehouse at an all-male institution, uh, HBCU, really have it be personified in the community. I know there's a lot of, not necessarily positive stereotypes about black men, so to see this and really show this to the world was really like heartwarming. And like I told like all my friends and stuff, like this isn't even about me. I'm just glad that the world is being able to see that a black man can help another black man out without it having to be negative and we can better each other to the accomplishments that weren't thought of in the past. My boy ended up calling me, he was like, no, 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 go on Facebook and Twitter and she's trending right now. And I saw that and I was just like, whoa, I'm, in, yeah, I, 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 
I couldn't believe it, you know, like I was just taking my baby to class because I had no other option. I do think she's the most beautiful baby <laughs> that's ever graced this planet. It's kind of amazing, shocking, like, you know, you know, like, I'm like, wow, she's impacted that many people. So, but but it, it, if she's touching people's hearts like that, then I'm fine with that. If I were able to use this moment to just talk to the world and to talk to society, uh, I think it would be uh, to talk about like the systems that create moments like this. Um, and like I was saying, community is really important and it matters and it feels good. Um, but every professor might not want to hold a baby during a lecture. And so we really want to think closely and look at the people that have been doing this work historically, look at the people who are currently doing this work, and look at the legacies and really think about the underlying systems that create moments like this. I think it's nice to focus on an individual and to sort of highlight you know, the feel-good story, but I really want to make sure that we all are thinking more acutely about, to use a math term, more acutely about the systems that affect you know, people that you know, need childcare or Teachers, you know, in K-12 and universities, adjuncts particularly in a university environment who have to sort of figure out sort of ways to live their lives but also support their students. Because we've all had teachers, you know, and we've all been through school. And so I think when the day comes that we're supporting teachers so that they can support their students better, I think we've really reached something and thinking about those systems again. That's going to be really, really important for me. Teachers don't necessarily uh, get a lot of you know, recognition. And so this is really for me, beyond sort of me having Asada, the baby, in my arm, is really about supporting teachers and parents with children and that, the intersection there. Um, and when did you decide you wanted to be a teacher? I've known I wanted to be a teacher since I was probably in middle school. And I remember very clearly telling my family that I wanted to be a math teacher and that I wanted to teach high school. What'd they say? They were like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. And I think part of, I'm a university professor now, um, but I'm still teaching. I get to do research. I get to sort of travel to talk to different teachers. I'm a teacher educator. Um, I'm a, I educate students. And I think part of that for me is being in a community to learn. I like learning, I like school, and I feel like I've never left school. Um, I graduated with my PhD four years ago um, from Columbia University Teachers College, and my advisor there, Erica Walker, talks a lot about black mathematicians, and I've always loved math, and I think I've had experiences throughout my life that have really ingrained my love of mathematics, and I want to share that with the world, because math is really awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I've been trying to use this opportunity to really give a shout out to teachers and students that are sort of working to, to get done what they need to get done. And I think that's really, really important for us to sort of realize and recognize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is there anything else, I guess? I mean, she was a good baby. She <laughs> he said she didn't really make noises. You were no. just around with her. Um, do you want one of those now? Uh, You're like, I'll take her. You know, I, I love children. Um, I still need to figure that out. So if you get back to me in a few years, maybe we could talk okay. about that. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, you're going to teach you with a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it really opened, it opened my eyes to like, wow, this man really cares about us beyond like this education. He cares about us as like human beings to the point to where like, if he could help us, if he could give his last, he would try to help us out and no matter what the situation could be. It's not often that I think people are given a platform to talk to people and education is really important, but we've got to think about the systems and supporting people that have been doing this work. and. Teachers matter, education matter, matters, and students matter. And we got to really intersect those and think about um, the intersection of failures. Kimberly Crenshaw talks about this. You know, when it comes to how one identity we may hold, um, for example, she talks about black women. It's Women's History Month. Um, and how law and public policy um, and our practices daily, uh, we sometimes fail people in society. And I think in this moment, I was able to not fail Wayne uh, and take care of Asada. But I think there are people every day, parents every day, that sort of go through this work. They have to take care of their children when they're getting their homework done, or they have to take care of their children in different ways. Um, and I want to really make sure that we recognize the importance of all the people that deal with these things on a daily basis, um, as we feel good about seeing, you know, me hold wonderful Asada. <laughs>